consumption over you, right? Right. We are being consumed by ourselves. All for not following God's law, statutes, commandments. You understand right, that? Right. You understand that, Kedar? Are we together? All for not following God's law, statutes, commandments. This is what happened. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 54. Bring it out. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. That's what's happening. All for not following our God's law, statutes, commandments. Our eyes is evil to our brother. That's why we are killing each other in these streets. Understand this. This is what we're living in today. Read what you got. And his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom. Because not only are we not killing each other, we leaving our young precious sisters as baby mamas. Because we make the baby, we lay down with it. We entice sisters, lay down with them. Guess what? When that baby come, oh, it ain't mine. I don't know you no more. Hey, what you got? And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Which he shall leave. We are, the point is, though, that we evil. Why? Exodus 23 and 2. Because we're not following simple laws. Watch this law. Watch what this law says. Simple laws that we're not following. That's leading to gang banging. Uh, 80s, 90s, whatever. The villa, the field, whatever it is. The ghost town. We following all this because one simple brother got a multitude to follow. Watch this. Watch what the Bible says, though. 
Exodus chapter 23 and verse 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. We shall not follow a multitude to do evil. That's yes, right. If we knew God's law, statutes, commandments, we would not follow the brother that says, all right, you're going to be from ghost town. Now I need you to go sell drugs. I need you to go shoot at this brother. Shoot at that sister. Go light up this neighborhood. Jesus. We ain't going to follow none of that because we're following God's law, statutes, commandments. That's Overall, right. the big picture, the big picture, guess what? If we follow God's law, statutes, and commandments, will we be a base people today? In Oakland, we used to live prominent. Guess what? The Black Panthers used to be here, right? We had food programs. We had we did for one another, right? We're not even as solid as we was then. Peace now we're just scattered all around, right? That's right. That's a, actually a law in the 364. Because this is talking about scattered around lands, but guess what? We scattered here in our own neighborhood. That's right. We, we going against each other here in our own neighborhoods. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 64. No. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. We're going to be scattered around all, among all people. I mean, that's how we got to each place on those slave ships. The difference between you and a brother that you call a Jamaican is a, is a stop. That's it's a stop. Right. We scattered across the world in, in captivity. That's I'm right. pertaining this to in our own neighborhoods, though. Guess what? We scattered in our own neighborhoods. We can't come together. That's why we got this neighborhood beefing with that neighborhood. Bring it out. That. You know what I'm saying? Why? Read what you got. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. How do we fix that? I got I can't let you leave without knowing how to fix that. Exodus chapter, I mean, Ezekiel 18 and 30. Bring it out. Let me show you how to fix that. Ezekiel chapter 18. Matter of fact, Acts 3:19. I'm going to show you in the New Testament, how do we fix that? Because that's a question we all want to answer, right? We are we are scattered people. How do we fix our communities? Is it by being a, a Islamic over here? Is it by being a Christian over there? Is it by uh, being a seven-day Adventist over here? African-American? Egyptologist? We're gonna how do we fix this? Let's see what the Bible says. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Because we all believe in the Bible, right? Let's see how to fix it. Repent ye therefore. The Bible says to repent. Read. And be converted. That's how we repent. Converted, another word for convert is what, sister? What's another word for convert? Tell us, what's another word for convert? Because the Bible said be you converted. Change, right? Change, right? What's going to change us? Let's see what the Bible says is going to change us. Psalm chapter 19. Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. I like that you said open mind because... That gives me the opportunity to address that. Guess what? An open mind has led us to this confusion. An open mind is leaning to our own understanding. Right. My understanding might say I'm going to go be a, a seven-day Adventist. Bring it That's out. An open mind, right? But guess what? We're going to go with what the Bible says. We're going to close our mind and just follow instructions. Let's see what the instructions say. You read? Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Remember, we left from following God's law, statutes, commandments. That's how we got into this predicament. Bring it out. See? Converting the soul. But guess what? The laws is the same thing that's going to bring us back. That's right. Not following the laws took us away. Following the laws is going to bring us back. That's Everybody right. Everybody understand that. That's as simple as it gets. Read Bring it out. out again. Bring it out. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Bring it out. Read it. No, no. Uh, law. Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Give me uh, Psalms 55 because they have no changes, right? That's Psalms 55. 19. Hey, watch this, Tillis. 16. 16. Watch this. Watch this, sister. Because, because we have no changes, let's see if the Most High God is going to be happy with us if we don't have no changes. Guess what? The changes is coming back to God's law, statutes, commandments, right? But none of our people want to do that. We don't want to learn. Let's see how God feel about that. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 55 and verse 19. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of all. Salah. So God said, I'm going to continue to afflict you. That's why you're going to wake up tomorrow morning and read on the news and hear about another brother getting killed. That's why you're going to wake up tomorrow and hear President Trump say, uh, uh, we're going to build a wall. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're going to cut welfare and That's cut your right. programs That's and right. uh, all that type of stuff. All the right. negativity that he's saying. That's right. why. Because we have what? Because they have no changes. That's because we have no changes, brother. We right. come back to follow God's law, 
statutes and commandments. That's the only way that we are going to get change in our community. Because we all want change in our community. Right. No. Sister, do you want change in your community? All praises. Do, sister, do you want change in your community? Guess what? Watch this. Read. God shall hear and afflict them, even that abideth them also lot, because they have no changes. As we were just reading, a word, another word for change is convert. That's Let's right. see what this is going to convert. This is going to bring this is change. We're going to come right back to it. Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. What's, it, what's your name, sis? Yeah, what's your name? Sunday. Sunday. You want change in the community. How about you, sis? What's your name? Allie. Allie? Sunday and Allie want change in the community. Let's see what's going to bring us that change. Read. Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. God's laws is perfect. Read. Converting the soul. That's what's going to change the soul. So you love your people, right? That's why you're out here right now, right? Because you love your people. And you want change in your people, right? Let's see what's going to bring that change. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. Let's see one step that you can take today that's going to bring change to your entire nation. See, Let's Jack. see Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So God said, a woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Read. Neither shall the man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. I'm going to give you the flip side first. I'm going to give you the back end. If I'm a man, right, what's something, a piece of garment that a woman wears? A piece of clothing, an article of clothing that women wear. And men should not wear. So if you're going shopping, what are you looking for? Underwear. Let me, let me show you real quick. Let me show you real quick. What, uh, okay. What I'm talking about is an article of clothing that women wear is dresses. Men wear pants. Women wear dresses, men wear pants, right? So if I walk down the street with a full blown dress on, like Dennis Rodman, remember he had that wedding gown on? Bring it out! You gonna look at me. You gonna look at me like I'm weird. I'm out of order, right? No, that's how you're supposed to look at me because I'm not supposed to wear a dress. That's right. Are you exactly correct? On the flip side of that, women are not supposed to do what? The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Men are not supposed to wear dresses. Women are not supposed to wear pants. It's that right. simple. Understand that. Pants were made and created for men. Right. Our foremothers back in the day. I got a, uh, a, a nice uh, an aged woman. You're so beautiful. A nice aged woman. Let me ask you a question. Sis. Back in the day when you were growing up, did any of the sisters wear pants? No. You know why? We, cause we, we went with this Bible. Guess yes. what? In around the 60s and the 70s, Amelia Bloomart, is that her name? Yeah. Amelia Bloomart, guess what? She changed the game for our sisters. They had a problem with their men. They wanted to wear the pants just like they men. You yeah. understand that? Wear the pants in the house, right? Yeah. Guard that term. Who wears the pants, right? That means who's in control, right? They wanted to be in control in their relationships, right? So to get power behind their movement, guess who they turned to? Our beautiful black sisters. That's right. Our, be our beautiful Israelite sisters. That's who they changed to. And guess what? They said, guess what? Y'all can wear the pants. Y'all can rule your houses just like us. And guess what? Our women, we never even thought about what God said. Because we just read the law and said, God said, don't wear no pants. We took that and we ran with it. So now what we got today, in 2018, all my independent sisters, all my independent women, we got women chest bumping, we got disorder in our houses. You know what I'm saying? Spiritually, we got to look at this thing spiritually, right? Because the laws are spiritual, right? So if I put on pants and I feel like I'm going to my house, are you married, sister? Are you married? Is anybody any married sisters? Any married sisters? No? No? So guess what? Anyways, I'm going to go with the point. A woman goes into her house and says, now I'm running things. Now the house is all in disorder. And that's going back to, guess what? Our children being raised up in disorder. That's right. right. So the scriptures actually says that. Give me the uh, the Right. Raise, um, is the Ezra's eight and five, right? Second Ezra. Guess what? That leads to our children being raised up wrong. Teach all from sisters wearing pants. Right. That's right. But you want change in your community, right? How do we change our community? By coming back to God's Law, statutes, and commandments. Watch this. 
Second Ezra chapter 5 and verse 8. Bring it out. There shall be a confusion also in many places, and the fire shall be often sent out again. Uh, what's your name, sister? Okay, so what I wanted to convey to the sister, though, if we really want to come back to the Most High God, we got to do what the Most High God says, right? So that means taking off pants and putting on this. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Drop that. Because I wanted the sisters really to understand. This is how we get change in our community. You got to put understand the, the spirit that it puts on brothers. And brothers shouldn't be looking at you now either way or, but guess what? If I put on a modest clothing, guess what? I'm not going to put on a lustful spirit on top of my sister. Or my brother. Guess what? But if I put on this, read 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Women are supposed to adorn themselves in modest apparel. That's How right. you came up, sister, not showing their, their hips, tits, and all that. That's for your husband. That's, That's right. for the one that you married. Right. Not showing everybody that. Now a brother ain't going to look at it. A brother going to look at you with a certain level of respect. You right. understand that? That's right. If you dress modestly. But guess what? If you put on um, a spandex and tights and all that, what is a brother going to be looking at? Right. Be honest about it. A brother gonna look at every all your unmentionables, everything that you don't want him to look at. That's exactly what he gonna be wanting to look at. And guess what? When he comes to speak to you, what is he gonna want? He ain't gonna want no conversation in relationship. You know what I'm saying? He don't want no marriage and all that. He just want what you showing. Him. So guess what? You gotta come back to wearing this. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel and if sisters adorn themselves in modest apparel that's bringing change to our whole community that's right let me ask you a question brother you had a question real quick yeah yeah what I, was, you... I was just wondering um if the bible had said honor thy master if, if we wrote the bible why would we say honor him guess what read uh go to colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. bring it out because we don't actually get it teach i need a full understanding of teach it. Come, come closer, brother. What's your name? Bob. Bob, right? Yeah. Watch this. The question was, why would we put something like that in the Bible? Yeah. Because guess what? The Bible, let me show you this first. I'm going to go backwards. Let me show you this. Psalms chapter 147 and verse uh, 19. So I, I need you to understand. What's your name again? Bob. Bob. I need you to understand who the Bible is written to and who it's written for. That's so, right. And who it's only pertaining to. Maybe out. when you understand that, we're going to understand something deeper. Read Psalms chapter 147 and verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Jacob is named Israel. Twelve tribes of Jacob. So the so-called blacks today, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans. That's who the Bible is written to. That's who he showed his word unto. Read what you got. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. So when this Bible is being read, it's only being read to the 12 tribes of Israel. That's, That's right. right. It's not dealing with nobody else. So it's not even talking about obey a master like this. Right. Because it has nothing to do with this guy. Right. That's right. He has nothing to do with the Bible. It's only talking about me and you. Go back to the history of uh, when we had. Uh, Colossians 322. Read that real quick. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22. Okay. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. According to the flesh. Now we're going to read you why that was saying. So Paul is speaking to the Israelites. Every word he's speaking is to the Israelites. That's right. Me Let me show you why. Teach up. Bring it out. What's that? Matthew 23, and Matthew 23 and verse 8. Bring it out. Because in the old time, I'm going to explain it to you, and then we're going to get it out of the Bible. What happened in the old time is, as Israelites, you know what I'm saying, if I owed you some, some money, right, but I could not repay you, the money, I had no money to repay you, right? What would happen is I would work off my debt. So when no. I worked off your, my debt, in turn, you would be looked at as my master. Uh, Leviticus, Leviticus, yeah, I want to go back to that. 20, go ahead, read that. Leviticus, chapter 25 and verse 39. Bring it up. And if thy brother dwelleth by thee, be waxed poor. If he be waxed poor, meaning he did not have any money, read. And be sold unto thee, Thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. So if I'm wax poor, right, and I don't got the money, now I'm become your servant. And if I'm your servant, right, I got to obey who? 
Right. Which is my what though? Master for now. But he is the child of Israel. It's only a deal between right. two Israelites. That's right. right. So right. now he's giving you, Paul is giving you the guidelines in that relationship. Right. So it's not talking about an earthly master. I mean, a, a, a master slave. from another nation, a slave master. Teacher. It's talking about, read, verse 43. Read. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, read. but shall fear thy God. But, the bond, but thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen. So that's the, that's the understanding of it. Now go back to Colossians chapter 2 and verse, uh, what was that, 22. That's the understanding. Now he, Paul is only giving you the same guidelines from back then. That's right. So if I was poor, I couldn't work it off. I became your servant. So in, in being my ser uh, your servant, I cannot buck up against you. I need laws to guideline that relationship. Read. Colossians. Bring it out. Sir. Teach on. Colossians chapter 3 verse 22. Bring it out. Servants. Obeying all things your master according to the flesh. According to the flesh, all people read. Not with eye service, as man pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. So now what happened today in 2018, our perspective, guess what? Somebody came with this idea, right? Somebody came, because is this man in the Bible? Uh, well, I don't acknowledge that. You don't acknowledge it, but did our people acknowledge it? Bring it out! Yeah, because we were fed that. So guess what? If I call him a master, what, that's Matthew 25 and... 23 and 8. 23 and 8. Read what you got. If I look at him as a master, if I can, get, if I can convince you that this is a master, who are you going to obey? If you could convince me, then yeah. But is the world convinced? Because if I look at... Look, you got a phone? Yeah. If you type in Jesus Christ right now in Google, what's going to pop up? That picture. This picture, right? right. So guess what? The masses is convinced. Bring it the out. masses is convinced, brother, that this is the master. That's right. 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 So I'm going to use that and I'm going to tell you to obey your master. So as a people, who are we going to obey? Uh, well, so, so, so why is this description... Early hair, I mean, why is the description different from the picture? That's, that's exactly what we're talking about. Watch this. Matthew 24 and 24. I'm going to show you why. Because that's only fulfilling Bible prophecy. Watch this. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ. So the Bible, this is Christ speaking himself. He said there's going to arise false Christ. Because you got to know the real to know the fake, right? So this is a false Christ arisen. Read. And false prophets and false prophets read and shall show great signs and wonders that's all they science and all that good you know the stuff that they do healing cancers and doing all that right read in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect so they going to deceive the very elect let's see who the elect is isaiah 45 and verse 4. then i want you to go to colossians chapter 11 verse 19. No. Out, um, uh, the make truth manifest Teach, huh? Let's see who the I, elect is. Because it says they're going to deceive the very elect, right? Let's see who the elect is speaking about. Read. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 4. Oh, of course it's about us. This whole Bible is about us. Yes, I'm right. sorry, Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. This Bible is your book. It's right. all right. about you, brother. Read. For Jacob, my servant's sake. Jacob, which is our forefather, Israel. Read. And Israel, mine elect. Israel is God's elect. So guess who's walking around deceived? Because guess what? The Israelites, who are so-called black, so-called Native Americans, so-called Hispanics, is calling themselves exactly that. They're not, they're not calling themselves Judah. They're not calling themselves Issachar. They're not calling themselves Reuben and so on. What, right. What's your nationality, brother? I'm African-American. So guess what? You from the tribe of Judah. You're not even calling Take yourself out. out. You are deceived. You fell a victim to Matthew 24, 24. Oh, yeah. He said false prophets, false prophets, false Christ is going to come and make you think that right that you got in your head. But guess what? Here's the solution though. So what am I though? You from the tribe of Judah. That's right. That's what God recognizes you as. That's, That's right. what God created. God created you, brother, from the tribe of Judah. That's Most right. Most wonderful thing God ever made. Uh, Israel. Look it out. Watch this. Right. What does African American mean? That is a good question. How do you get? How do you come to that name? Because I'm older than that name, so I know you are. So I'm just saying that uh, if, if, what, what, how I came to that is two white boys. My ancestors. That's right. 
That brother knows My ancestors you know. were from Africa. So right. I have to say Africa. Right. And, and since I'm in America, that's why I say America. Okay, so now I'm about to give you some further edification okay. on those two names. Check it out. Did you know that Africa was conquered in the Second Punic Wars by a, name, a man named Leo Scipios Africanus? Right? That's who named Africa. That's who named Africa, right? Yeah. This is why. Uh, Philippians, uh, Psalms 49 11. This is why. Because the Bible won't give you all the answers. So what happened was he conquered the land and then put his what on it? Let's see if the Bible says that. Psalms chapter 49 and verse 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. That's this man. All our enemies, every nation besides Israel. Their inward thought is, I'm going to go and live forever. And ever and ever. Read. And their dwelling places to all generations. And their dwellings to all generations. We're going to pass it down generation to generation as they have done. Because we're only an extension of the Roman Empire here in America, Babylon. This Bring is only an extension of the Roman Empire. That's right. Which is an extension of the Greek Empire. Right. Passing on forever and ever. Teach. They shall call their lands after their own name. They shall call their lands that they conquer after their own names. That's Ain't right. that what we just discussed? Right. So that's how Africa got its name. After a so-called uh, white man, as you know it, as an Edomite, that's what the Bible calls it, but as a white man, as you know it, that's how Africa got his name. Well, Africa really pertains to a Caucasian or Edomite. You understand that, right? So now on the flip side, watch this, I'm not done. America got its name from who? Americo Vespucci, you know what I'm saying? Another explorer who came to this land, was there people Was there people dwelling in this land mass before he came? No! Yes. Right, but he conquered it and took it over, right? right? And then put his name on it. Guess what? He's another so-called Caucasian man. So another so-called Edomite, right? So now what you got is one Edomite in African, I mean uh, one Edomite in Africa in the name African, and another Edomite in the name uh, American. So what you're saying is you come from two Edomites. Is that possible? Bring it out! Is it possible? No. To come from two Edomites. Two white men. No, no, no. no it's no. not possible, well, right? We were here way before Christopher Okay, and all that. but we're talking about the name right, right now. Right. So it's no. impossible for me as a person to come from two men in the first right, place, right? Right, right. And that has nothing to do for you. That do with you. That's why only in the 1980s, Jesse Jackson had a bright idea. He said, I'm a, my people been colored, my people been Understand that. That's what happened. That's how you got that name. But guess what? We're going back to why this came about. Because this is all lies, right? Why would we get lies, right? Read what you got. First Corinthians 11. First Corinthians 11 and 19. That's it, right? T. Manifest truth may be heresy. Read what you got. First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse nineteen. For there must be also heresies. So the Bible says there must be heresies. A heresy is anything that goes against this Bible. Does this man go against the Bible? Well, he wrote it. Didn't he? Right? Mm. No, he did not write it. We wrote Teach it. We just read that in Psalms one forty-seven. Yeah, yeah. The Bible was written by Israelites to Israelites. That's right. So-called native blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics. Written by us for us. It's almost like Google. Watch this. So, if, does this go against the Bible, right? Does it? No. This image, right? Well, I mean, if Okay, let's read. Let's read. Bring it out. Okay, I'm talking about the image that you said. You oh, yeah. This image goes against the Bible, That's right? Not our image. That's not right? Our image. You understand that, right? Yeah. This image goes against the Bible, yeah. right? That's right. a heresy right. that goes against right. the Bible. Right. African American, does that go against the Bible? Yeah, because God didn't call you no African American. Teach, he didn't call you black, brother. Teach. Those are heresies which go against the Bible. Right. But what did this say? Revelations. Chapter. No, uh, uh, step back in. Uh, yes, sir. 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 19. Right. For there must also be heresies. Key word. Also. There must also be things that goes against the Bible. Right. There are false teachings. Remember, because it said it's a false Christ. A false prophet is going to come. So of course he's going to come and tell you lies, right? right. Read. Among you, and they which are approved may be made manifest among you. That the truth may be made manifest. The truth has to rise, right? right. Let me give you a proper example of that, right? Because if you go to church on a Sunday, 
and the pastor tells you that Jesus Christ is white, right? But you're looking at the Bible and it says he got woolly hair and black skin. You're looking at the pastor like what? He's lying to me. That's a heresy. So guess what? I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to go figure out where the truth is. That's right. And guess what? John 8, 32. This is going to lead you back to this. Read. John chapter 8 and verse 32. Bring it out. Bring it out. This is why there must be man uh, heresies made manifest. Because a, a heresy, a lie is going to lead you back to this. Read. And ye shall know the truth. You shall know the truth. Read. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth is going to make you free. Knowing the reality of, guess what? I'm not what the world called me. I'm not what society and the people who put me in captivity called me. I'm not that. But I'm what God called me. I'm from the tribe of Judah. Yes, right. I'm from the tribe of Issachar. Brother, what's your nationality? Sister, what's your nationality? You, you are Israelites, according to the Bible. Yes, guess what? Right. Watch this, though. Colossians 2 and 8. After that. Okay. Colossians chapter 2. In verse 8, you also get warning, brother. You also He also gives you warning. Watch this warning, read. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So the Bible says beware, right? If I told you to beware, what you going to do? What you going to do automatically? You're going to be cautious. You're going to put your guards up, right? Off the bat. He says beware. Be cautious of what? Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Spoil you through philosophy. Spoil That's you. right. If you got milk a week past that expiration date, what is that milk now? Spoiled or destroyed, right? You're That's no right. good. You're done, right? Look at our people. We are destroyed as a people. We walk around destroyed. That's why we're killing each other. Bring it we, out. We, didn't be, we didn't take heed to the caution, right? We didn't take heed to what the most I was telling us, read. After the tradition of men. From the top. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. The philosophy was, I'm going to give them a Jesus Christ that looked like me. And that's going to deceive them. Right. You know, that's going to make them think something else than what the Bible is saying. Right. That's going to tell you and uh, lie and put you off, spin you off in a whole different direction. Right. Right. That's right. After the tradition of men. Because it's men that taught you that, right? Because when you look at this Pentecostal church, right? When you look at how that was formed, who started that Pentecostal church? Same man in that picture. When you look at the Seventh-day Adventist church, who started it? Same man in that picture. When That's you look right. at the Baptist church, who started that religion? Same man in this picture. That's the same right. one who put us in slaves, I mean as slaves, on slave ships and sold us. Yes, That's man, where God. all that started. Teach. Read. After the rudiments of the world. Rudiment means teaching. After the teaching of the world. And not after who? And not after Christ. Because Christ didn't teach none of that, brother. That's, right. That's not what Christ said. Christ said, follow me. Keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's right. No. Um, if you believe on, believe on me as the scripture says, not as what a man told you. That's you right. understand that? Oh, yeah. So we are together, right? I just yeah, want to yeah, make sure yeah. you understand yeah, yeah. who you are. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.